Hello everyone and welcome back or welcome to my channel. I am Krista from Krista's Catalog and today's video I'm going to be talking about my 2024 most anticipated releases. So I am obviously a new booktuber and I felt like one of the best ways for you guys to get to know me is to hear what I'm excited for. So I have a mix of everything on here. I have sequels that I'm excited for. I have uh, horror books, fantasy books, contemporary books. So I have divided it up into certain categories and there is about 60 or so on this list. I'm also going to sit a little further off to the side so that way I can put pictures up on the screens of the covers. I'm obviously not going to be talking a lot about what these books are about just because there are a lot of them. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Okay, starting off with the first category, it's going to be my most anticipated sequels. Uh, so the first book on this list is Mission Manhattan by James Ponty. This is book four in the City Spies series. This is a fantastic middle grade. If you have not read it and you're not a big fan of middle grade, I definitely recommend checking this one out. It's very, very good. The second one is Coyote Lost and Found. This one is by Dan Gymanhart. Gymanhart. And this one was a very unexpected uh, release for me because the first book came out in 2019 and I didn't think that we were going to get a sequel. It's very much a standalone, um, but I am very excited nonetheless for this one. And then we have House of Elephants by Clarabelle Ortega. This is the third book in the Witchlings series. There is no cover yet, but we did just recently get a title release. Similarly, we have Moon Madness, which is book two in the Camp Sylvania series by Julie Murphy. This is a middle grade horror supernatural series. Next, we have Oathbound by Tracy Dion. This is book three in the Legendborn series. This was a very unexpected read for me last year that I absolutely fell in love with, so I'm very excited for the third book. Okay, then the, then the rest of these are going to be still sequels, but they're a part of series that I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to get to and hopefully will um, read them in the coming year. So the first book is Heavenly Tyrant. This is by Zarin J. Zhao. This is the second book in the Iron Widow series. Then we have the sequel to Finally Seen, which is Finally Heard by Kelly Yang. I have heard amazing things about Kelly Yang and her middle grade novels, but I have yet to check them out. Then we have the sequel to The Swifts, which is A Gallery of Rogues. This is by Beth Lincoln. This is again another middle grade series that ha that somehow skipped by me in 2023. Similarly, we have Winston Chu versus the Wingmeisters. This is a, the second book in the Winston Chu series by Stacey Lee. It's a Rick Riordan Presents series and I personally am trying to read all of the Rick Riordan Presents books. We have Mirrored Heavens. This is the third book in uh, Rebecca Roanhouse's uh, Between Earth and Sky series. I did just pick up fairly recently the first book. And similarly, we have A Lots of Ways sequel uh, by Darcy Little Badger, which is called Shine Lind, I think is what it's pronounced. Um, I, this was a shocker to me too. I didn't think that this was going to get a sequel, but I'm excited nonetheless. Okay, moving on to contemporary books. There is a very long list for this. Uh, most of these are adult romance books. I feel like I'm definitely in my contemporary era lately. However, there are some stunning middle grade books. So the first section of this contemporary list is going to be all books by authors that I've read from before, which is why I'm planning on picking up their books. The first one being The Partition Project by Sadia Faruqi. This is a middle grade contemporary story. I have read, I think, one or two of her book, middle grade books before. Um, I also know that she's written like a first chapter book series that is really popular at my library. Then we have This Is Me Trying by Raquel Marie. Raquel Marie is an autobi author for me. One, because she used to be a booktuber, but also two, the quality of writing for her stories is phenomenal and I have loved every one of them. I especially am excited for this one because it touches on grief. Then we have Canto Contigo by Johnny Garza Villa. My most anticipated release of this past year, 2023, was this book. I'll put a picture of it. Um, and I was kind of obsessed. So I am equally obsessed for this one. Also, it's about a mariachi band and I 
Love those. Then we have The Breakup List by Adib Karam. I haven't read Adib Karam in a little bit because he hasn't published uh, anything somewhat recently. So I am very excited for this one. Similarly, Here We Go Again by Alison Cochran. Um, she only wrote one book, uh, Kiss Her Once For Me, which I believe came out in 2022. Um, so I'm excited to see what this one has to hold for us. Of course, there are a few authors that are very popular. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to read them, not just me. So we have Funny Story by Emily Henry, Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. And then we have I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Durant by Stephen Graham Jones, which is a horror memoir spinoff book, which is kind of why I put it in this contemporary list, but also I didn't know where else to put it. And then an author that I discovered in 2023 and fell absolutely madly in love with was AJ Sass. They have a new book called Just Shy of Ordinary that's coming out in its middle grade again, and I cannot wait. This might be one of my most anticipated of this list. Then we have Ronnie Chud. Chuduri Must Die by Adiba Hagidar. I need this one in my life. I don't really have an excuse for it. Um, I read the premise and it was great. Mindy McGinnis I used to really love when I was younger and she's been doing some really cool environmentalism horror natural stuff. So this one's very similar to that same vibe and is Under This Rock uh, that I am excited and intrigued to pick up. Then we have Skybriar by Talia Hibbert. I really loved her Brown Sister trilogy. I'm not super into like erotic fiction and that kind of thing, but it had just the right amount of spice for me. And this one is her next big publishing series. We have Make the Season Bright by Ashley Henry Blake. I really love Ashley Henry Blake. Um, and this one is a Christmassy book, so sign me up. And then we also have a book called The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. I'm a little hesitant for this one, but I am intrigued to say the least. And then the rest of these are all authors that I have not read from before, so I am excited to give their books a go. Uh, the first one is Maybe It's a Sign by E.L. Shen. Then we have The Other Side of Perfect. This is by Melanie Florence and Richard Scriminger. Um, if I'm looking down in the camera, by the way, it's because I have a notebook where I listed all these out for myself. Then we have Noah Gets Crushed by Maggie Horn. Then we have The Bullet Swallower. I actually just ordered this book in my January Book of the Month book, and that is by Elizabeth Gonzalez Jones. This is like Mexican Cowboys, kind of. Next, we have The Prospects by K.T. Hoffman. And then we have The Night of the Storm by Nishida Parekh. Um, then we have Four Eids and a Funeral by Farida Abike and Adiba Hagidar. Um, so obviously I've read from Adiba before, but I have not read from the other one. And, um, this one just sounds really interesting to me. And this next one I actually got as an arc, um, at my work, and that is Shark Teeth by Sherry Winston. This is a middle grade contemporary story about a girl whose mother just recently got her back from the foster care system. I'm intrigued. Um, and I really love these different um, stories that we've been getting in middle grade lately that deal with all sorts of different kinds of family relationships. Next we have The 710 Split. This is by Carmen Lee. I am obsessed with this cover and premise. It's about teachers, bowling, and they're lesbians. Like what, what's more perfect than that? Then we have Lavash at First Sight by Talene Vascumi. And then we have A Bon Me for Two by Trinity Wynn. And then we have Director's Cut, which is probably the one that I'm most iffy about on this contemporary list by Carolyn Greenwald. I'm not very into like Hollywood movies and stuff, but this one's specifically in the eyes of like a director and um, it's more about their relationship and, rather than like Hollywood stuff, but the Hollywood stuff is there from what I have gathered. So We'll see if I like it or not. And then last but not least, the other book that I should have put on the books I read from other authors before is In Repair by A.L. Grazide. I was not expecting this one either. Um, this is by the same author that did Icebreaker. Um, not the Icebreaker that's really popular on TikTok, the other Icebreaker. Um, and I really loved um, Icebreaker. And so I am very intrigued for this one. This one also, I think, sounds more non-romantic but more self-reflection based and I am intrigued. Okay and then the next set of categories is short story collections. Um, I used to be really into short story collections. I kind of fell off the bandwagon but I do have a couple of video ideas in mind for them and I also just really loved them. I 
I think I've enjoyed almost every short story collection that I have read, so I definitely want to read more of them in the future. So the first book is Out of Our League. This one's specifically talking about queer people and sports. Then we have Relit 16 Latinx Remixes, which is just as it says. It's fairy tale retellings, but spun in a Latinx way. And then we have The Black Girl Survives in this one. This is a horror collection. And then the next one is We Mostly Come Out at Night. This one is another queer based short story collection, but it is more surrounding the horror monstrous type creatures and things got that kind of spin on it i really like that idea then we have my big fat desi wedding i think this one's a short story collection where each of the people each story is going to be about certain people at the same wedding i think um very similar to like blackout and whiteout i would assume but i don't know for sure then we have two middle grade uh short story collections the first one is On All Other Nights. This is a Passover celebration. Um, there are a few authors on this that are really buzzworthy for me, like AJ Sass. And then the next one is The Doors Open, Stories of Celebration and Community in Desi Culture. Um, again, there's a couple of authors on this that are a little buzzworthy to me, but also I'm just excited for more uh, short story collections for middle graders. Okay, and then lastly, the next category on this list is going to be fantasy. This one's much shorter just because I am currently in a lot of series, as you can tell from this list. And also, I don't tend to read a lot of like fantasy standalones, and I think some of these are, so um, that's why it's just a shorter list. So again, starting with authors that I'm familiar with first, I am going to start off with The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo. This is historical fiction fantasy, I guess, kind of. I think about vampires and vampire hunting. Not 100% sure on that. Um, Lee Bardugo and I have had an iffy relationship in the past. I did not like her Shadow and Bone series, but I did like her Six of Crows series. And I wasn't at all intrigued by her uh, Ninth House book. But this one sounds somewhat interesting to me, so I might end up checking this one out. The next one is It Happened to Anna by Taylor K. Mejia. Uh, this is a middle grade supernatural horror type story. Um, I have loved uh, Taylor K. Mejia's, uh, they've written a couple of I think YA books before but I'm more familiar with their uh, Paula Santiago series and this one is about a girl that has a ghost friend I think. Then we have The Mercy of Gods by James A. Corey. This one is a new sci-fi series for them. Um, I actually started their Expanse series I think a couple of years ago now and I fell in love with it so I am very excited for the fact that they are coming out with something brand new. Then we have A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Fazal. Uh, this is a YA historical fiction fantasy again. I read their debut book We Hunt the Flame and I did not like that at all. Uh, however, this one sounds much more my speed and I am hoping that since writing their debut they've gotten better with writing so it might actually mesh with me better. So I am um, putting this on my list a little hesitantly though. And then the last one that's familiar with me is Moonstorm by Yuan Ha Lee. Yuan Ha Lee, I read their Dragon Pearl series and really loved it. And this is adult sci-fi, I think, so it's very different from the previous work, but I am still excited nonetheless. And I think it may have a trans main character just like Dragon Pearl. Then in terms of new to me authors, we have Feybound by Sarah L. Arifi. Uh, this one has been showing up on a lot of people's most anticipated releases. I don't really know anything about it except that it's Fey. It looks cool, uh, but I'm kind of one of those that's falling for the hype. So we have a drop of venom by San by Sanjni Patil. This is the first book in a YA series where I believe it's um, Pakistani mixed with Medusa fairy tale. And then we have of Jade and Dragons by Amber Chen. Um, this one's kind of a wild card for me. I think the last two are also wild cards for me. So the first of those that have authors that are kind of wild cards for me is the Briar Book of Dead. This one's by A.G. Slatter. This one is, um, obviously, like, really pretty, um, and that's what caught my eye, but then when I read the description, it seemed really cool and unique. I think it might be in the same, like, vibes as, like, Thistlefoot, which I really enjoyed. I could be off base on that assumption, but that's kind of what I'm getting from the description. And then the next one is Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John Wiswell, and this one I think is also going to be sort of like an offbeat fantasy-esque, um, book, so... 
uh, I don't know about those ones. Now obviously I won't be able to read all of these books um, this year but I do plan on hopefully purchasing some of them but also keeping an eye on them for reviews and things to see if I want to read them in the future. I might also check some of them out in at the library um, especially for the ones that I'm not so familiar with. So that is it guys for this video. Comment down below what is your most anticipated release for this year. Are you excited about any of these ones? Also put a Goodreads link down below to to my 2024 most anticipated releases so that we can check them out and read the descriptions more thoroughly um, to get a better idea because I know I buzzed through all of them. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here and I hope to see you again. So thanks for watching. Bye!